One, two, three. This is Dr. Alex Avila with Love University, and we're back. I'm an author, psychologist, and speaker. Every week we talk about how to love yourself, others, and a higher nature. We talk about loving in relationships and your personal life, your work, your career, and also your higher nature or spiritual practice if you have one. And each week we have guests, and today we're very fortunate to be having an amazing guest, and we're at the live at the Festival of Books in Los Angeles, uh, the LA Times, which draws over 100,000 people a year. Uh, it's an amazing place for learning and knowledge. And I have an esteemed psychologist, Dr. Paul Ekman, who is a professor emeritus, American psychologist, pioneer in the study of emotions and in relation to facial expressions. Uh, he, he's known as the best human lie detector in the world. He is rated as one of the top 100 most influential people in the century, uh, 59th of the top most cited psychologists, co-discoverer or micro-expressions. He's worked on the hit series, Lie to Me, and also he's worked with Dalai Lama on Compassion. Welcome, Dr. Ackman, to the show. Uh, thank you. We're very impressed with, um, you've done an amazing amount of things in your life, and I, I know you're still doing them. Uh, now, a little bit about the idea of lying, because I know you've done a lot of work on that. Um, and pe people lie maybe to avoid punishment or to have gain. Why, why do people lie, and what percentage of people do you think lie? Uh, well... Let's only consider serious lies where yes. there is uh, a loss if detected, uh, a loss of uh, money, position, status, reputation. Yes. I think most people are rather uh, considered uh, about whether they engage in such lies. Uh, they're careful uh, yes. about it. I see. Most are. So you're saying the loss, I think you had a research study where you said you can tell if someone's lying if there's a loss involved. But what if there isn't a loss? Then are they better liars because there's nothing at stake? Absolutely. There's no emotions aroused. Um, there's nothing they need to conceal. I mean, I could tell you, as I will right now, yes. that I just finished talking to the president of the United States, and he told me he's going to resign tomorrow. <laughs> Now that's a, okay. That's is that a, a, is that a lie? lie. No. Okay. <laughs> yes. That's a big lie. Yes. And they have nothing at stake if you detect it. So I ah. think to tell it quite yes. convincingly, the president really said ah. he's going to resign tomorrow, wow. and I'm the first person to know it. Right. And then you'll be the next president, Dr. Ackman. That, that and he's a point <laughs> in place. I like that. Okay, that's interesting. So that's uh, no nothing to lose, so you can lie effectively, you're saying, in that case. And uh, now let me ask you, Dr. Ackerman, is what is your opinion of the so-called compassionate lie, or even a good lie? I mean, it can lie and be useful at times. For example, let's say someone's dying in a hospital. You, you may not want to tell them they're dying to keep them alive. What do you think of that situation? Uh, I think there are times when lying is justified and where everyone would consider it to be justified. Okay, so, so you do believe in compassionate lies, or you think all lies are bad? Oh, no, I believe in compassionate lies. I see what you're saying. Now, you did discover well, the... Oh, say, say that again. Yes. Uh, I was just saying, but my wife tells me that she's just bought a very expensive dress, and she thinks it looks wonderful. What do I think? I'm not going to say I think that's the wrong color. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you want to keep your uh, head about you, right? So. <laughs> that's right. That's great. You got it. Exactly. And you are the discoverer of micro-expressions, uh, these little things you said are within a half second that are unconscious, that indicate lying. Now, can someone be good enough that they can control micro-expressions, or is that something they can't control? Uh, about 5% of the people... I've studied don't show micro expressions. Uh, and I don't know why they're not there. They might be because they're uh, very good at concealment. It might be because they're uh, not having any conflict about uh, what it, it is they're lying about. But yes, yes. Most people, over 90% of people, will sometimes show a micro-expression if they are concealing something about which there's a lot at stake. Ah, okay, that's the key. A lot, lot to be lost ah. if detected. 
I see. Because I know you work with law enforcement, you work with judges and lawyers where there's, uh, and I do forensic psychology myself, uh, and there's often, uh, you know, money involved or, or freedom or other things where people may be motivated to lie. And uh, the idea that there are some people that are, we call them truth wizards. They're naturally and easily able to detect other people's lies. Is that something that's innate? I mean, you have to have good eyesight or like be very uh, sensory, observational focused. What makes you a great truth, truth wizard? I wish I knew the answer to that. Um, <laughs> well, they say, they, they, say, I, they say you're a truth wizard. Is that really true? You're, you're one of the best? In well, I spend a lot of time studying this. Yes. And uh, so I don't think I was a natural to begin with. Oh, I see. Uh, mm -hmm. My colleague who uh, was working on finding out uh, how the truth Wizards come into being. Yes. Uh, Professor Maureen O'Sullivan yes. unexpectedly died before she finished the study. So we don't know the answer. Ah, uh, I, see. I see. All we know is that there are a small mm. number of people who are, without special training, uh, extremely good at this. Most people aren't. Yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, a, I'm an intuitive. I'm kind of very in my head. I'm a creative person. So I, I miss even simple kind of cues. Uh, but some people I know are very sensory. They're able to pick up like small odors and small, you know, little things that others people can't. So I guess they have a talent in that. Yes, some and, people do. We don't know why. Yeah, and you also mentioned stuff like cues uh, related to micro um, expressions, such as uh, many uh, sh shrugs of the shoulder, uh, maybe lowering your voice and things like that. Uh, some kind of um, indicators, maybe swallowing and and that kind of thing. And you, and you do use that in a lot of your studies. I've seen some of the research in that. Uh, but at the same time, you said there's some people that are misguided truth tellers. Like, what if you're a shy person and you kind of shake your hands and you look down and they're telling the truth? So how do we determine shy people from liars? It's not easy. And we need a long string of behavior uh, that is at least 10 minutes, preferably 30 minutes. Yes. To examine. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we need to know something about what that person's usual behavior looks like when they're not under pressure. That makes sense. So the key is pressure. So um, is that why interrogation rooms are always like shut down and people feel under pressure? Because it makes them lie if they are not lie. You know, like you can tell, detect if they're lying. Yes, interrogation rooms are not friendly places. <laughs> And those are some of the techniques they use. Now, you say you're afraid that, that people may misuse this stuff, like uh, to invade people's privacy. Are you talking like in a dating situation, uh, or when, when should this be used or not used? Well, of course, I would prefer that it only be used in national security and law enforcement. Right. But when you develop a tool and you put it on the Internet, you don't get to control who uses it or for what purpose. Right. I see what you're saying. I only hope that it's more used to help society than to harm people. Definitely. But I don't. Yes. Now, uh, Dr. Ackman, uh, the other idea, and I think you mentioned this also, is uh, do we really want to know if people are lying all the time? Because what if we become very cynical? Like your kid is lying to you, your, your spouse is lying to you. Would that make people feel bitter and cynical if that's the case? It certainly would. <laughs> so I certainly you? don't want the, uh, uh -huh. you know, I think most uh, personal relationships that are extended over time are based on trust. Yes. And once trust is betrayed or exploited, yes. it's not always possible to restore it. So you have to be careful not only about whom you trust, but uh, acting in a way that uh, causes others to regard you as untrustworthy. That makes sense. Uh, I think I asked you this, but I'm not sure if is there an answer. Is there a way to know what percentage of people lie and what percentage of the time do they lie on the average? Is there such a thing as that? Well, if you give me an invisible cloak, I can tell you the answer. <laughs> oh, really? So it's hard to tell. Huh? Uh, I mean, do you, would you say like yes. a majority, uh, th th two thirds of people lie at some point in their life? We, we, who kn nobody knows because the, you know the only way we'd really be able to tell 
Uh -huh. This is if you were able to observe people without their right. permission, right. which is considered unethical. Uh, I see. Plus, I mean, they could be lying that they're not lying, right? So we don't even know which is the lie, right? Yeah, I mean, are you going to trust what people tell you if you ask them how often do you lie? Why would a, a frequent liar tell you the truth? Exactly. Now, how did you get into this, Dr. Ekman? Are you, were you a liar at some point and reformed, or how did you get so, so fascinated by liars? Well, it was uh, really not my choice. It was yes. when I was uh, in the days when I was teaching young psychiatrists, it was what they asked me for help about, particularly for how they could tell when a patient who had been hospitalized because of a serious she has one uh, attempt now said, I'm feeling much better, doctor. Let me have a weekend pass. Yes. And sometimes they did. That patient then killed himself. Wow. How could you tell when a person was lying uh, about something of the utmost seriousness? Uh -huh. It took me 25 years to get an answer. Wow, that's amazing. So compassion is what helped you become a uh, truth detector, in a way. You wanted to help people like that, the suicidal people. Yes, absolutely. That's beautiful. Now, Dr. Ackman, how can we apply this uh, technology in a positive way? Like, you know, I'll give you a few areas. You tell me if it's, there's a way to use this. Uh, first of all, romantic relationships. You know, we hear on uh, nowadays, you know, people meet on the online way, and the people may not tell the truth about their different parts of themselves. Uh, so is this uh, useful at all in a good way in romantic relationships? Well, I think that romantic relationships don't survive if there's distrust from the outset. So you have to take the risk of uh, being missed. You have a choice in life. Uh, would you rather risk disbelieving a truthful person or risk believing a liar? You can't avoid both. You gotta uh -huh. set your sights on which uh -huh. risk are you willing to live with. It's like a fa false positive or something like that or those kind of things. You know the uh, which one you choose the most. So, uh, in other words, can someone date someone and say, "Well, they're not really telling the truth. They're uh, still married, or they're, uh, you know, they have financial problems." Can, you, can people tell that by the micro expressions? Well, micro expressions occur for a number of reasons, so they aren't always a sign of malevolent intent. Ah. Uh, and sometimes micro expressions occur unconsciously. Yes. But if you can't tell from the expression itself whether it was a deliberate attempt to conceal or whether the person is actually concealing that itself <laughs> unconsciously. I see what you're saying. Now, how about in terms of parents and children? You say that this can help, uh, I guess, parents and children better. Is that because the parents know if their children are using drugs or if the parents are able to know things about the children? Well, the parents really need to establish with their children uh, what the benefits of trust are. But they also need to give their children the rights to have privacy. Everybody wants privacy about some things. Privacy means you can't know about that aspect of what I've done or what I'm planning uh, or what And uh, the parents find that very difficult to grant, but unless they do grant that privacy to their children, uh, I used to say to my kids, I don't want you to ever tattle on your sibling or your brother or sister it less light sets I see so, and how about in work and business can uh, bosses tell if their employees are lying or vice versa is that a useful thing in the business world well I think people business, most business leaders would like to know that <laughs> yes but they don't consider the fact that, that there's a cost to invading privacy and having your employees feel that they're distrusted. 
it's, a, it's not an easy choice to make. I see what you're saying. So, yeah, it's a fine line between, like I said, respecting privacy. But what if the employee is stealing from you? Obviously, you want, you want to know that. Or if things are being sure. mismanaged. Yeah. And uh, so this is really fascinating, Dr. Ackman. Now, you also have uh, other areas that you've done research on. Uh, you talk about it, uh, categories of emotions. You mentioned anger, fear, disgust, sadness, and enjoyment. But there's also something called compassion. And I know you work with the Dalai Lama and some wonderful materials. Uh, would you just, yes. Compassion is not an emotion. Ah, I was going to ask you that question. Yes. It's an attitude and a motivation ah. to the suffering of others. Yes. Emotion ah. are not that specific. You know, I can be angry at the weather, at the newspaper, at the president, at my wife for uh, being late. Uh, you can be, you can have an emotion about any, anything or anybody. Compassion is much more specific. It I is a motivation uh, to relieve the suffering of another person. Yes. He said that also empathy is more broad because empathy can basically you put yourself in other people's shoes and it can be other emotions like joy or, or different things. Right. Uh, and then, you know, the term emotional granularity, dealing with people that are very specific in their emotions and they often have better mental health because they can define things better. Uh, and the idea is you also talk about global compassion. Uh, and I think you said this is one of your big uh, interests right now, that you want uh, people to feel uh, toward uh, strangers uh, the same way they feel toward their family in terms of helping them relieve suffering. Now, yes. you, may, you may have heard of the Tonglen uh, meditation where you breathe in the suffering of others and breathe out compassion, which I think uh, P Dalai Lama and others practice something like that. What do you think of those kind of yeah. techniques? Should yes. we should we be doing these techniques to increase compassion uh, in the world? Well, I think there are many ways to increase compassion, uh, and that certainly is one of them. And you have to find what works for you. But the most important first step is the motivation. Yes. That that's what you want to do, is you want to increase your own compassion and com and activity that results from that. That makes a lot of sense. Well, Dr. Eckman, it's been a wonderful pleasure having you on the show. And, you know, I would love to have you back if you like to actually talk about compassion and some of these other emotions. Would you be open to that? I would be. Yeah, I really love it because uh, this is something a lot of people need to know. Uh, emotional side of life uh, is very powerful. And at Love University, our mission is to help eradicate loneliness and help bring compassion and love to, to many people in the world. Uh, through the materials that we have and our guests. And I think, uh, you know, you're doing an amazing uh, mission as well. And uh, what are you looking forward to now? I mean, is there something you're working on that we should know? Um, what, how can people know more about your work and things like that? Well, I have a website, uh, paulekman.com. Yes. And it has a lot of different kinds of things that people can uh, download and find yes. out about. Definitely. Uh, and I'm... Uh, um, Working on a, a new uh, a book about uh, emotional awareness. Uh, the oh, key wow. thing yes. about, I mean, emotions involve to solve problems without thinking. You know, we sometimes say, oh, I was caught up in an emotion, I just did that without consideration. Well, sometimes that's very useful. Yes. And sometimes it gets you to a lot. <laughs> I can see that. And the only key is to be aware of when you're in the grip of an emotion. Yes. That's very powerful. Well, Dr. Eckman, it's been wonderful. And what is your website, Dr. Eckman, um, that we have? Com. Dr. My name, all yeah. in lowercase, all one word. Yes. A-U-L-E-K-M-A-N dot com. Beautiful. Well, again, it's been a pleasure. Listeners, uh, Dr. Eckman is an amazing uh, contributor to humanity, and I believe uh, you're creating an, ama an amazing legacy. Uh, leaving behind uh, for a lot of people this idea of love and compassion and also even detecting lying can be a, a positive because building trust is one of the elements of love as you said and uh, and again Dr. Alex Avila this is Love University until next time Dr. Ackerman has been a pleasure we'd we'll love to have you on uh, everyone put away your books and we can also see you at love type for you at AOL.com L-O-V-E-T-Y-P-E -E, the number four letter U at AOL.com love type and also loveuniversity.com until next time Dr. Avila.